Welcome to I Lecture Online. Now let's take a closer look to the equation of a line. So here again I drew a line on the xy plane and notice I drew a few points on the line and gave them the x and y coordinates of each of the points 0, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4 and so forth. Notice the first number is the x value of that coordinate and the second number is the y value of that coordinate. Now the equation of a line will have the form y equals mx plus b. x represents the x coordinate of any point on the line in the x direction, y represents the y coordinate of any point on the line in the y direction. m represents the slope of the line, that's the steepness of the line, and is defined by the rise over the run when you go from one point to another point. For example, when you go from this point to that point, notice the run is this distance and the rise is this distance. So this would be considered the rise, how far do you have to go up in the y direction to get to the next point, and then here this is the run and that means how far you have to move in the x direction to get to the next point. You pick any next point, it doesn't matter which point you pick. And so the rise by definition is the change in the y direction the run by definition is a change in the x direction. This little triangle sign simply means change. That's a mathematical symbol for change. And that means you're going to subtract the two y coordinates of the two points. So you write y2 minus y1, and here you write x2 minus x1. And again, it doesn't matter which point you pick to be point 1 and which point you pick to be point 2. And we're going to illustrate that in just a little while, where here I say, well, what if I pick this as my point 1 and this is my point 2, or I can reverse them, I'll pick this as my point 1, or this is my point 2, or I'll pick this as my point 1 and this is my point 2. It doesn't matter which points you pick, it could be any two points on the line, it doesn't matter where they are relative to one another. So, that means if the equation is y equals mx plus b and m is equal to the slope, which by definition is the rise divided by the run, how far do I will I go up from one point to the next divided by how far will I move to the right from one point to the next? Then, and by the way, if the, the line is in this direction, notice the rise will then be negative. The actual will go down in the y direction. That's what we call a negative rise or a drop. So we write that as a change in y over the change in x between the two points, or we simply subtract the two y coordinates of the two points divided by the two x coordinates, or the, or the subtraction of the two x coordinates. Now notice that we do have to write y2 minus y1, x2 minus y, x1. The order of these must be the same in either case. Doesn't matter which point you pick, as long as you keep that order the same. And then plus b, b is what we call the y-intercept, which is where the line crosses the y-axis. In this case, you can see that the line crosses the y-axis when y is equal to 2, so that would then be considered the y-intercept. So we can, we can then write that y is equal to that y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 times x plus 2, 2 in this case is the y-intercept, so that's always easy to find. Now, how do we find the slope? Well, we have three sets of points. Point one will have x1, y1 as the coordinates here, and point two will have x2, y2 as the x and y coordinates. And so then we want to find the slope, m, in the first case here will be y2 minus y1, four minus three, divided by x2, minus x1, which is 4 minus 2, that's equal to 1 over 2, or 1 half. So in that case, the slope is 1 half. Well, it should be 1 half in every case. Let's try the next one. m is equal to, so here again, I'll call this x1, y1, and I'll call this x2, y2, and I should get the exact same slope. So here I go y2, minus y1. So in this case that would be 3 minus 4 divided by x2 minus x1 which is 2 minus 4 which is equal to minus 1 over minus 2 which is also equal to 1 half. So again we get the exact same value. Let's pick two other points. So I'll let this be point 1. So this gives me x1 y1 and this here gives me x2 y2. And again we'll do the subtraction. So we can say that the slope is equal to 
y2 minus y1, which is 2 minus 4, divided by x2 minus x1, which is uh, 0 minus 4. So this gives you minus 2 over minus 4, which is a positive 1 half. So notice, in all three cases, I get the result slope equals 1 half, so I can then write that y equals 1 half x plus 2, which is therefore the equation of that line. It now gives us a relationship between every x-coordinate of every point on the line and every corresponding y-coordinate of any point on the line. And that is how it's done. I, I think I did. See, I reversed them. See, I reversed the two points, which essentially I call this point point two. Now I call this point point one. See, I reversed them, and you get the same value. Yeah, but you so do it that way. You did x one minus x two. Oh, you're saying x two minus x one? Well. No, you do. You always do x two minus x one. Yes. No, that, that's true. So the question is, can I reverse this order? Can I write y1 minus y2, x1 minus x2? Technically you could, you'll get the same value, but I believe that's bad form. We typically don't want to do that. It's always the second one minus the first one. But you want to see that you get the same result. All right, well, let's, let's try that then. So let's say that m is equal to y, 1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So we can do that. So again, if we take the first point, notice we'll write y1 minus y2, that would be 3 minus 4, divided by x1 minus x2, that would be 2 minus 4. So this gives me minus 1 over minus 2, which is equal to 1 half. So again, you're right. You can actually do that, but I prefer that you don't. I prefer that you stick to the general format of that. It's hard to mess up, in other words. Yes, you can reverse them. What you can do is have this is y2 minus y1, and this is x1 minus x2. That doesn't work. You can't flip them around like that. All right, so let's, <laughs> let's show them. All right, so here is m equal to question marks. So now because we need to make sure. So what if we write y2 minus y1 divided by x1 minus x2? Now I've already told you, you shouldn't do that. All right, let's see what we get. So y2 is 4 minus y1 is 3 divided by x1, which is 2 and x2, which is a 4. So here we get 1 divided by negative 2, which is a negative 1 half. And so therefore, you don't get the same value. So this definitely is not the right way to do it. You can't mix them up like that. All good points.